now you've done it. You fell down a weird witch's wormhole and landed yourself in ancient Egypt. So, can you survive? Let's find out. The first thing you might ask is, which ancient Egypt? Because the entirety of ancient Egypt spanned across several thousands of years with quite a few different eras. Let's go with, uh, ah, the iconic New Kingdom, the height of Egyptian power and influence, and the most documented for research purposes. How convenient. Since you made it to this video, I'm going to assume that you're not a literal mouth-breathing, knuckle-dragging, fragile infant. So you can give yourself a pat on your freshly whipped back because you've already survived the hardest part, childhood. Being a kid wasn't easy. Since they didn't have any fancy beeping machines to hook moms up to and keep babies alive, infant mortality rates were extremely high. 20 to 50% of babies didn't make it out the womb. If you survived being born, next up was surviving the world, much harder. With things like disease, hunger, and other environmental factors out to get you, it's not gonna be a stroll through Easyville. I mean, some of these kids look so frail you could practically see their blinking health bar. Hang in there, guys. Oh, bummer. Your main duty as a kid is to help out the family that brought you into this world. We're talking chores, taking care of your siblings, protecting the farm, learning the family business, everything necessary for survival. As far as food, it's whatever mama and papa could scrape together, which is mainly bread, milk, fruits, and veggies. Ever have half an onion on dry bread with warm milk? It's actually pretty disgusting, but it's what keeps you growing. Because if you don't eat, well... And hey, if your papa has a high enough fishing level, he could bring home a pretty sweet catfish to tear into. Get that protein. Your mother, assuming she survived slopping you out of her belly, would feed and care for your ungrateful ass. But none of that is applicable since you just got orphaned by the space-time continuum. Before we take a look at what to do next, let's see where you would fit in the grand scheme of society, because everyone has their place. Ancient Egyptian society worked in a hierarchy with rich and powerful guys at the top and everyone else at the not top. So really no change from the modern world. The head honcho around these parts is the pharaoh. He's the divine king and whatever he says, goes. Subscribe. Just under him are his closest bros and advisors. Then we have an educated and skilled middle class, and then a laboring lower class with slaves and servants at the bottom, which were usually foreign prisoners of war. Since there's a 95% chance that you'd stick out like a turd in a punch bowl amongst a well-tanned, weird-talking population, you'd probably be captured and sold into slavery. Tough break, outsider. <laughs> But let's assume you can convince the xenophobic guards that you're one cool dude. Hey, I'm one cool dude. It worked. Time to get a job. Since you can't speak Wingdings 3, you're gonna have to prove your worth through manual labor. Luckily, there's plenty of jobs to choose from like farming and... Over 90% of all ancient Egyptians were farmers, so there's plenty of friends and rivals to be made. You know, see who could grow the best onions or whatever it is farmers did for fun, finger each other's cabbages, I don't know. But your absolute best friend is the Nile River, which is your number one source of delicious brown water for your crops. Just don't taste test it. <laughs> Thankfully, the application process to work on a farm is no more than moving a rock from here to there. And with your stellar gamer build, you can easily get the job done. Just remember to lift entirely with your back. <laughs> As a bonus, you can read and write, not in hieroglyphics, but in cooler things like letters and numbers, perfect for taking your own notes. You're hired. Now you can get to work and earn that bread. But since the Persians haven't invaded yet and introduced proper currency, you'll be working for literal bread. So you slave away for months on Bahir's family wheat farm, eating your brown bread and sandy beer dinners while sleeping on a filthy, crusty, dusty dirt floor. Watch out for snakes, they bite. <laughs> Day in and day out, you swing your sickles and your hose, dreaming about the hoes you left behind, taking extra caution not to get too distracted. Oh, looks like you cut off Bahir's arm. Bahir will remember that. It's then you look down and notice some squishing between your toesies. The ground's getting rather moist. Ah, the Nile's flooding, you say to no one. After you finish fighting off the invading river rats using your plus seven strength copper sword, it's time to pause the farming grind and try your hand at construction while the Nile does its thing. Oh look, the Pharaoh wants you to help build a new pyramid. Lucky you. Since you have countless hours placing virtual cobblestone under your belt, this sounds like a pretty sweet gig. Just keep an eye out because sometimes it's not yourself that you need to watch out for. Daily labor is just part of your worry though, because you still have 
Diseases, like slaves, are the hot and trending collectible of the time. You could even trade them to your friends if you're feeling generous enough. I got trachoma. <laughs> well, I've got first edition smallpox. Check it out. <laughs> With your 21st century wrinkle brain, you know that you need to keep clean to prevent disease. So you take a dip in the Nile to wash your many crevices. Just downstream of the laundry, which is downstream of the town's dumping grounds. Uh-oh, looks like you picked up a friend. A parasitic flatworm went and crawled up your roundworm. And now, you have schistosomiasis. With that comes a fever and aggressive diarrhea. And since we're in ancient times, you know what that means. <coughs> but little wriggling worms aren't the only threats you face. Like the infected fellas a minute back found out, there were many different diseases sickening up the land. The most popular being tuberculosis, smallpox, and malaria. These guys would make sure that your stay in ancient Egypt would be a quick one. So be sure to swat some skeeters and tell your neighbors to cover their coughs for Ra's sake. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought that there was a mosquito on you. Yeah, you too. Anyway, you get back to chiseling some sandstone blocks and, oh, looks like you caught Pharaoh checking out the goods. He admires your strong physique, attention to hygiene, and glistening back sweat. He even heard about your conquering of the river rats, and he's impressed. Those are some good qualities. Good qualities for a soldier. You just got bumped up a few societal ranks. Look at you go. Oh, Pharaoh wants to expand his empire. Well, now your promotion makes sense. <sighs> Time to go to war. Being a soldier can't be too hard, right? You just pick up a shield and a sword and swing it a little. After all, people are just bigger rats. Oh, sweet. They even have the cool curved swords. Curved swords. It's called a kopesh, and boy, does it hurt. But if swinging a sword ain't your style, you could opt for something a little less slashy and a little bit more stabby. If you want to poke someone further away but still want to be close enough to revel in their death, I recommend a spear or a javelin. If you really have the urge to stab someone at least a few thousand scarabs away, go for the simple and sweet bow and arrow. It never fails. Unless you miss. Alright, time to step onto the sandy battlefield and fight for a country you just fell into. The enemies of the day are the Sea Peoples. No one really knows who they were, and they most likely came from somewhere north of the Mediterranean. But Pharaoh, don't give a good gosh dang. They've been flaunting their stupid looking boats and shit for the last time. Fuck you, Egypt! Oh, it's so on. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is... Ah, oh, damn. Alright, let's try that again. Respawn. Okay, quick time dodge the arrow. Fire your own. Oh, nice shot. Good arc, stable flight, and... Ugh, right on target. Good job murdering that guy with absolutely no complex backstory or family that he was fighting to protect from invaders. To him, you were the bad guy, but hey, war is hell, isn't it? You keep popping off shots and taking out numerous expendable enemy NPCs. While you continue to just riddle the battlefield with arrows, you notice something in your peripheral. Not something, someone. Oh, hey Bahir, didn't know you were a soldier. <laughs> oh, thank God, it was, it was just a dream.